Hello and welcome to the Comedy Slab podcast. I'm Shane O'Connor. He's Adrian Lacey. You can hear him breathing. It apparently it has to. I, I think it's, it's it's a bit much, really. But uh, it's a habit after all these years. And uh, tittering and guffawing and throwing in the odd interject like he did just then. Um, he'll have a bigger part later. Don't worry. Once he's got nuts out of his teeth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Not every day you get to say that, is it? Yeah, swarm right Um But um, that's the worst thing you can have, isn't it? Before you start recording a podcast, is a is um. I was going to say a bag of nuts, but they were a bowl of nuts. So it was most definitely a bowl. Yeah. Uh, anyway, while he's uh, swishing the nuts out of his choppers, <laughs> let me let me tell you about the Comedy Slab podcast. Um, it's uh, it's us, it's me, it's him, it's uh, Shane O'Connor and Adrian Lacey. Each week we get together and alternately we choose a comedy program to watch or listen to, and we'll have a chat about it. And we'll play a couple of clips between now and the end of the podcast. And we'll also give the program a, that we're uh, slabbing a mark out of five each, giving it a grand total out of ten. I chose last week Alfie Moore, it's a fair cop. Um, and I think that hopefully this week it's going to be a very arresting episode. Oh, so we're we're uh, we're policed that you could join us <laughs> as um as we i didn't sign up to this as we plod through the pod- podcast oh. or is it a podcast <laughs> or or is it pc or un pc oh, yeah i didn't think yeah, of that one, yeah. I, did, uh... I, I only had a few moments on the toilet before we started anyway to think of all those <laughs> but yeah we'll do that in a second we'll get to all that but foist as they say foist mm. the comedy foist. oh i've got to tell you this because I, I, I know you you laugh about things like this um, on our YouTube channel, and forgive me, I can't. When somebody puts a comment on our YouTube channel, it, it sends an email. Um, mm. And forgive me, I can't remember which episode it is. I'd have to look through my emails. But this week, I got an email from somebody who listened to one of our podcasts on YouTube. Mm. And in the comment section below, they put something like the review of so-and-so begins at nine minutes and 16 seconds <laughs> like, <laughs> in other words they don't like the preamble yeah but but it was like it was like we were going to give you at nine minutes 16 seconds we we're going to give you the definitive answer but you've got to <laughs> you've got to go from nine minutes 16 seconds to about 45 minutes before you get the gist of what we're talking about anyway so what was well at least that? they're not recommending fast forwarding to 44 minutes and don't even think dear listener of doing that it's not funny and it's not clever and it's not big. Oh, we love it. We love it. I mean, any any interrupt. We're just like a um, a precocious child, aren't we? We like <laughs> we like any attention. We don't care whether it's good or bad. <laughs> yeah, fair dues. But yeah, so obviously people don't like this bit, or he didn't anyway. Um, where uh, we did the little chat about various things, mm. uh, not least comedy news. Sent sent you an article earlier. Did you uh, Did you get it? I did, and better than that, I actually read it. Oh, my God. Progress. I know. <laughs> oh, my God. Shocking. But that's train rides for you. I actually went into a building you could call a workplace. That's a novel experience for the last couple of years. Oh, right. You were working not from home. Not today. And oh. apparently we're all drifting back that way anyway. Hey, one that caught my eye anyway, this was, do you see mm. these DMs are open for a new comedy show on BBC Radio 4 and, and Radio 4 Extra? And I thought, is that Doc Martin coming <laughs> to the radio? <laughs> You're so <laughs> down with the kids, aren't you? <laughs> I am. I'm so retro, granddad. Um, apparently this is this, is this uh, DMs are open. That's the name of the show, isn't it? Or certainly a working title, I would have thought. I think. The way they're saying it, it it is the title of the show, I suppose, just a working title. And uh, yeah. they're saying it's is, new... is the title working though? That's the, that's the question. Well, is the concept working? It's it's a new showcase for the public's comedy writing. So basically, they go, "Hello and welcome <laughs> to the show." What have you got? Yeah, uh, and, and then we, the haven't, audience we haven't got a budget for a writer. So please, 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 on bended knee. Well, as it says further down, and having. Um, been at the Beeb and uh, I know a bit of the backstory. News Jack was uh, BBC Radio 4 Extra's previous way of either, A, if you believe in it, um, encouraging new talent and the, the nursery slopes for comedy writing talent of tomorrow, mm. or B, a way of saving on the price of a writer. Uh, I can imagine there's a few writers who might be resting, waiting for the phone to ring, who think, hang on a minute, I've got a CV as long as your arm. Mm. Some of the shows that we've enjoyed and said, oh, what jolly good writing it is, and they can't get arrested. Yeah. Uh, and then if you ring up, uh, you know, for, for a moment, a, a, a part of me thought, mm, I'd quite like to do that. And then you think, yeah, is, is that entirely moral? I don't know. 
I sit on the fence a bit. They used to, I mean, we, we both worked in uh, in radio, didn't we? And they used to do it all the while in radio, didn't they? This this uh, mm. we're having a competition to find a new presenter or whatever, and you go, oh, cool, here we go again. Um, and it it generally ended the same way, but. Um, yeah, in tears. Yeah, yes, <laughs> I, I do think. I mean, part of it is, as you say, it's um, it de- it does depend entirely on which side you're looking at it from, which perspective. But I, I mean, from from my point of view, I always I always do feel that it's um, it's it's not it's not a great management thing. I think it's it's bad for business always. Up really, I think it's like you say, it's very discouraging for your your current talent. Or people mm. that you've used previously, or people that. But also, it, it sets a potential. I mean, look, do we know for a fact they're not paying on this show? I believe it was the case they didn't pay on News Jack, but I may be wrong on that. So I am going to have to be slightly on the fence. It's hosted by Athena Kublinu, isn't it? Who's. Um, a, didn't we. Didn't we, Athena. Moans about something was one of her shows, was she? She did or something? I can't remember. I remember I didn't. I wasn't keen. Yeah. Yes, was it right on on PC or something? Damn. I can't remember the phrase you used. Uh, something about, was it about bullying, cyberbullying or something? Or was it, oh. mm, no, was it about being cancelled? or Cancel culture. Yeah. Cancel culture, yeah, that was it. it. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. knew we'd get there in the end. I knew we'd get there in the end. Uh, <laughs> Two so old she, duff was in the night. She's one of the hosts. Um, and, yeah, I'd, I'd, I don't know. It, it sounds like the end of a road where they've kind of, you know, it's 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 the last stop after monkey tennis, isn't it, really? <laughs> <laughs> Abandon all hope. I thought again we'd get through a show nah. a bit more than five minutes in without nah. an Alan Partridge reference. He's but in my DNA. It's not going to happen, is it? So. Do, you, do you know? Have I have I mentioned this before? There is actually a podcast called Monkey Monkey Tennis. Did you know that? Monkey Tennis. <laughs> Monkey Tennis. <laughs> is that you wouldn't one? let it lie, would you? <laughs> it Hello, is and welcome to Monkey Tennis. <laughs> Monkey Tennis. <laughs> Oh, you horrible man. Right. Every little minor verbal trip and tick of yours, yes. I will pick you up on. Urr. Mercilessly. <laughs> That's if I could say mercilessly. 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 Um, anyway, yeah. carry on. So they, they were saying that this um, is it a social media content creator uh, is going to be joined by a cast of comedians who bring to life gags submitted by contributors yes is what there is a it is i didn't imagine it did i or it wasn't tiredness deceiving my eyes that there is an artist called ali official oh okay is that that the guy in the picture is it then yeah i'm assuming yes um our friends can't see but uh yeah we've got a picture of two people in front of us who I assumed were co-presenting between them. I would have thought that's reasonable. Don't you think there's a, there's a psychologically, or maybe even, is this Freudian? I don't know. There's a, there's a, there's a, a, a part of me that looks at this and thinks, hang on a second. If, if you had a heckler in the audience shouting out, you know, trying to be funnier than you as a comedian, mm-hmm. your initial reaction would be to stamp on them like a roach. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Or would certainly have fun with them. And, you know, I'm just thinking of um, I'm thinking of the way that uh, people like Jimmy Carr handle heckless. It's, it's, right. it's, it's not friendly, what, is it, by any what, what, What's the point you're making? I'm not well, quite... well that the, in normal comedy scenarios, the, the, the amateur enthusiast is not invited oh, the, along. Well, it, actually, funny you should mention that, but Harry Enfield said the reason... Um, Paul Whitehouse got a gig. Or, or no, Paul said of himself, which you might say is somewhat um, polishing his own crown. But I'm sure he said he got a gig because he was the funniest person in the pub. And he happened to know Harry Enfield. I think there was some link in the early days, going back way back when. And were they like, decorators? Well, didn't they? Have, didn't they decorate? Well, oh. I, I seem to remember Paul Whitehouse was. I don't know about Harry, but you may well be right. But the point was, uh, the Paul was saying, "There's always someone waiting behind who's the funny guy in the pub who then gets the paid gig." Yeah. Um, what you're saying is the unpaid heckler becomes the 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 writer in this show. Is yeah, that, I, th- I think I think in any business, fair? 
Well, I, I don't think that enthusiastic amateurs are never encouraged in any business. And and you you remember the court case when I tried to help out with that operation in the local hospital. You know, they, they don't. <laughs> they but don't. also, actually, you remind me, this is genuine. This sounds like an April Fool, but it isn't. Uh, although it may have been in the April edition, uh, which accompanies Broadcast Magazine, the, the industry's shiniest, glossiest magazine. Uh, it has a legal supplement every now and again. I think that there's an uh, illegal supplement. A, a legal, oh, a le- <laughs> you, you're not allowed to pick ups on my <laughs> mispronunciation. Right, I'm really after you now. Uh, but anyway, that's the trouble of having a, a late gin and tonic very close to transmission time. But the point was, there is, uh, seriously, there's a court case, Tina Turner taking someone to court because they're a tribute act of, guess what? Tina Turner, oh, no. and the complaint was that she looked too much like her, and people could be confused by the posters <laughs> into thinking they were actually going to see the real Tina Turner. Is that, for, is that in this country? Is that happening? No, I oh, think okay. it's uh, because the law is slightly different. Uh, it may have been Germany. Uh, I don't think the Tina Turner is based there, but of she course lives in her, Switzerland, doesn't she, Tina Turner? That, does she? Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I know Phil Collins did at one stage, but I don't know if it's still the case. Yeah, it's, Geneva. No, he went of his own accord. If you <laughs> what? <laughs> if if you go up, um, if you go up the cul-de-sac that they all live in, I think it's on the left. You've got Tina Turner, Phil Collins. Are you sure Sting. it's Tina Turner, or is it the Tribute Act? Oh, I could be, I don't know. The but, Swiss Tribute Act. But that's wonderful, isn't it? That's that is delicious. That it's that priceless. She, isn't she's it? too much like her. But that's you wouldn't old, believe it. But actually, it? that is the complaint. Yeah, dear oh dear. Come on, then. This so this this yeah, as a right. concept conceptually, and I know it's all very sketchy, isn't it? The matter we'd, we'd I suppose we'd have to quite say, literally very sketchy. We'd have to <laughs> we'd have to slab it or listen to it at least. What, what, does he get the thumbs up from you or not? This idea, fresh and exciting, or a little bit worried. If I mean, I as I say, I don't know for a fact, but if if it's unpaid writing, I think that sets a dangerous precedent. Um, why? Why should you do that in that profession, you know, exploiting arguably the, the fact that people are perhaps a bit more desperate in showbiz, or you've got a greater body of people who think they've got talent, whether they have or not, Yeah, we find out. Um, but it's, um, I think it's a bit cruel, as I say, to establish writers who can't get arrested. And the, there are some, I won't name them, because no. they probably don't want to be named. No. I don't know no. all the names, but yeah. Yes, it is. It is a bit puppy syndrome, isn't it? It's a bit of a shame, really. But um, but there you go. Okay. Anyway, um, if you want to catch up with it, actually, if you want to take part in it, um, and um, Are you encouraging people writing for free. Well, <laughs> if you want to just go and find out what it's all about, there's a webinar at uh, oh, six I'll o'clock in you. the evening on the eleventh of May, apparently, to learn what the producers are looking for. And notice the time, which accepts that you're liable to have a day job. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. And, of course, all the professional writers won't have got up by then. <laughs> so. None of them get up before 8 o'clock in the evening. Mm, no. They're <laughs> just they in time for the pubs to open, isn't it, really? <laughs> but, yeah. but there you go. Anyway, on with the show. Um, to two men who have no illusions about their talent and ability. Did uh, you say tattoo men? T- 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 two tattooed men. <laughs> Um, to 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 no illusions. Um, anyway, we uh, are moving on to the uh, the subject of the slab for this episode. It's a fair cop, uh, but written and um, presented by Alfie Moore, an ex cop himself. Uh, was this one that you were across? Or I absolutely, remember. yes, I'd come across it in one of my many random Radio Four listenings. Uh, I quite, I'm not, not organised enough. Not that one is tied to linear radio as it goes out, of course, now in this age of catch-up on BBC, BBC Sounds. And it's a um, BBC Radio Studios production, have I got that right? No. no that's not no. the right order, is it? No, BBC Radio the comedy, comedy production. BBC Radio Comedy production. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had nearly all the right words, but uh, nearly in the right order. But, uh, yes, I was familiar <laughs> with it, and um, I don't want to give too much away at this stage, but um, let's say... I didn't resist arrest. Right. Okay. I don't know what to make of that now. Anyway, should we have a? Should we? Should we? Should we clip ours? And um, yes. Well, and, you need to set the scene first. Well, of course. and here's the rub. I don't really. I mean, the good thing about doing the clips for this, I realised in in both of the clips, is that uh, Alfie, bless his heart, just kind of does all the work for us, or for me certainly, anyway. Um, so let's dive right in. Here he is explaining what the show is all about. 
Yes, tonight I'll be using my many years policing experience to turn you all into cops. There's no collective noun for a group of coppers. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you may have heard of one. <laughs> There are various collective nouns for groups of specialist police. For example, a cell of custody sergeants, a tipex of metropolitan police statement takers, <laughs> or an irrelevance of police and crime commissioners. <laughs> I've been a cop for many years based in Scunthorpe in the Humberside Police. Now, everybody knows the police don't investigate all crime. There's no point lying to the public. <laughs> Official police figures tell us that 3.7 million crimes were recorded in the UK last year. Does that mean that 3.7 million crimes actually occurred last year? Probably considerably more. You see, we don't actually record all crime. Is it a fair cop? Well, it's a good cop, not a bad cop. Is that your headline, is it? It is. Bit of a sprawling one. Let's go with good cop, not bad cop. So where, where are you on this one? Is, is that sounds kind of like middle of the roady sort of... Uh, it was oh, okay. did you want to say brilliant cop? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. But the phrase is good cop and bad cop. I've gone for good cop, and that's clearly not good enough for you. Um, I think he's a consummate performer above all else. Um, obviously, you want the background knowledge, and you want... Uh, uh, obviously, it plays well that he's done 20 years... Um, he didn't say all of that on the beat, but you get the sense he's, he has been on the front line for a, a, a good chunk of it, mm. I would guess. Mm. Um, and um, it might sound bizarre, uh, since I'm supposedly a perfectionist, but I think I could have cut him some slack if he wasn't right on the, on the, the top end of the sort of smooth delivery, good put-downs, uh, quick responses, perfect timing, all of that. Um, I, you'd say, oh, well, he's a copper. Uh, so, you know, you can't expect him to be as perfect as like a Jimmy Carr has been doing it for 25 years. Not that I'm a fan of Jimmy Carr's, but you have to accept, you know, he can extract a laugh from his audience. Mm. But actually, I think if you told me that he'd been a comedian all that time, and it may well be that he's been practicing in his spare time, uh, it might have been a sort of parallel career. In his bedroom. Which, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What are the initials of parallel career? That's interesting. Isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. see what I did there. Yeah, yeah. Um, ECPC. That's what it is. <laughs> but uh, so that may be the case. In which case, it's um, uh, the case is closed. You know, he's um, he's on top of his game as a performer, <laughs> and he's got the knowledge. My flabber is gasted. I'm not going to. I'm not going to lie. Really? Oh, yeah. Did I... you think I wouldn't be a fan? I tell you what. What was going through my mind all the while was the. Dave Gorman fiasco. Oh. <laughs> and, and is it worthy of the name fiasco? Is that fair to him? Well, debacle. I mean, no, I was saying, <laughs> I, I thought I thought we had the fiasco. He did, I thought he did okay. No, you weren't a fan of Dave Gorman, and I and it, it kept putting me in mind of the Dave Gorman kind of, it's like lecture comedy, isn't it? It's that sort of thing. And I thought, oh, mm. I wonder if this is going to like really... But maybe well, it's because of his specialist knowledge, whereas Dave Gorman is taking a broad brush to things, isn't he? I think I would describe it slightly differently, which is that Alfie Moore has got the cheek and the chutzpah. And yeah, and that, I don't know why. Maybe that's what it is. I, I just, um, you see, I, I didn't think he was, the delivery was that um, as polished as you seem to think. I mean, it was heavily edited, that first clip that I played there. Did you notice that? Could you hear the... The, the edits in them. I thought they I were I think howlers. subconsciously, and you've you probably brought it into my conscious. I I maybe I've cut quite a bit of slack, but then um, maybe the producers cut quite a bit as well as you're suggesting. Are you, are you noticing sort of uh, this is getting a bit nerdy because we're sound balls, but um, you know reverb being slightly cut off or no? I, I'm I'm a great one for where breaths should be and when they don't happen and and right. where you where mm. you feel you can hear somebody's voice going into a breath and then it doesn't happen and that kind of thing but right yeah um yeah i don't uh, I, it, it did sound like it was sliced within an inch of its life just within with it could have been just that that minute or so that they'd uh, that they'd done it on and i don't remember through the rest of the show uh, picking up on it but I see. To me, here's the thing I'll throw into the mix. I think you were saying about his practicing and and how accomplished he was and all the rest of it. 
I think, and I don't know this, I haven't looked, I haven't looked it up and tried to research it, but there's part of me that thinks that maybe this was, was born out of after dinner speaking. Well, I looked at his personal website as one does mm. and guess what? He is for hire ah, okay. as an quotes, entertaining after dinner speaker. Right. But is that such a bad thing? I mean, a lot of people, I mean, Bob Monkhouse used to do after dinner speaking. Ronnie Corbett, I remember even I spoke to Ronnie about, uh, I said to him, I said, That's Ronnie, right. darling, um, <laughs> as your executive producer. No, I mean, he told me that, um, that this is uh, working on the Ben Elton show, um, Man from Auntie, which I think I was referencing just the other week, but some very fond memories working on that show. Mm. Um, Ronnie said uh, that they think they're getting the real me. And like a fool, I think Roddy in the chair. Why would I know any different? Because, you know, I can name drop him, but actually I don't really know him any better than any other viewer of the show, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Um, he didn't reveal too much of himself uh, working on the show or, um, you know, uh, he didn't say, oh, and, and this is me, like a Mike Yarwood moment. Yeah. Even then, I mean, that was the most uh, un imaginative and uh, unrealistic this is me you would have heard wouldn't you really because you, you think well it's just the same as the, I've been watching for the last 50 minutes mate I don't know what you're on about but yeah <laughs> but yeah I get what you mean yeah, um, yeah I, and you're right I mean it's, I say it like or I kind of half say it like it's a bad thing that it comes but I mean as you say there have been and, and there still are fabulous entertainers um, I who, mean what what is different about after dinner speaking that makes it not quite stand up i mean it can be half an inch away from stand up can't it you've got the clatter of crockery and um which you could have in a club anyway yes. um i'm being slightly tongue in cheek of course that's almost neither here nor there um I, one thing i would say is different um you're you're paid to entertain an in crowds you play to in jokes and so on it was said of bob monkhouse come uh, that that um, Barry Cryer said of him, uh, his brain was like a computer and, and he would have this discussion before he went on, oh, tell me about Bob in accounts so I can do a joke about him. Or, And so he appeared to be really in with the in crowd, to, yes. to coin a phrase. Yes. That's the only thing I, in, in the sense I can think of an after-dinner speech being fundamentally different from, say, a radio show where you're trying to appear out to a wider crowd, aren't you? Although, I mean, topically he does that, doesn't he? You could argue. You could say, well, actually, because because he's talking about the police and because the police are a thing that, that touches most people's lives in a, in a to a greater or lesser extent, it is something that we are either aware of or we certainly feel that we know we're aware of. And so he's not talking about a subject, you know, when he makes a snide comment about a commissioner or, or, you he know, he doesn't love them, does he? You no, know, or, or, or you know, Her, Her Majesty's Inspector of Constabulary or whatever he's talking about. <laughs> People can go with that because they kind of, they get the same, they have the same feel that he does for it in that sense, even though he's job and they're not as to use the, the parlance. But, um, is that a thing? His job, did you say? His job, yeah, that's what they call it. Yeah. Jo are you job? If you're a mm. copper, you're, you're yeah. I watched Is that it. unique too? Coppering. I um yeah, I think so. Yeah, I was talking to I was I was I was in um a McDonald's the other day, and I was talking to a, a, a an army sergeant from the Signals Regiment who sat at the next table. I was with my daughter, and she she started pointing at him because he was wearing his uniform. <laughs> And uh, like a man in uniform. And, okay, she, at the yeah. age of she said, "Daddy, so was that man?" And I said, "Well, first of all, I said we don't point at people, do we? Because that's <laughs> rude." Um, I secondly, I said, "I said," and he's like sat two tables away, like having his <laughs> breakfast. And I said, and secondly, I said, um, "He's a soldier." Um, and then I said, although quite how you would have seen him with that camouflage on, I'm not really quite sure. <laughs> oh, did he like that? He loved chance. it. He said, he said, actually, he said, I've had to start wearing a high vis vest, he said, because it stopped me getting knocked over, he said. But um, <laughs> so he, he gave as good as he got. But yeah, I mean, um, and he was asking because I'd, I'd worked in the 80s in, in the security industry and I knew a lot of squaddies. Mm. And, and I was talking to him about various things. And he said, are, are you X forces? And I think that's the terminology they use. So they wouldn't say a UX right. job, right. Uh, but the, the coppers do. I'm sure that's what I'm sure that's what they say. But um, but yeah. So I said to him, "Yeah, I'm SAS 
<laughs> special army soldiers. <laughs> a, um, a la Ross I thought, Kemp. <laughs> I thought you meant the Scandinavian air service. <laughs> yeah, well, I, well, I used to say <laughs> that. used to be a pilot. I used to say that to people and say, to me, you, you, you just said, watch me, because I'm, I'm ex-SAS. And they go, well, yeah. They go, yeah, Solihull Adventure Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> The old ones are the best. They are, they are, they are. Here's the thing. I mm. felt, and I don't know whether this is, I'd, I'd value your opinion on whether this, and I'm guessing not with you, I don't know from what you said so far, but I had a bit of a flashback to being on a company course, a company training course. It felt a bit like that, the way that he interacted with the audience. Well, there are such people. Uh, again, I would argue that, um, that's not maybe so shocking. Some people, teachers, e even priests, you know, anyone in a position of having the attention on them and being a bit of a performer um, can can drift into comedy, can't they? No, no, see, I, don't, I mean more like that he was saying, right, here's the scenario. <laughs> How many people think this or who would oh, do well, well, that? Yeah, or, it, but it was very self-consciously styled that way. I mean, we should explain for, for those unfamiliar. Um, but you can find it on BBC Sounds, hopefully for a little while. Yeah, yet, it's still on there, speak. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, he does. He takes you through. I mean, they, they swear an oath of allegiance or something at the beginning, yeah. don't they? Yeah. Uh, which I think is, again, it's, it's clever. Stagecraft is probably the wrong term, but... Um, certainly there is craft, a comedy craft there. It's involving people, engaging them, and it's like, and it's gelling together a whole disparate group of people called the audience, which um, we might take that for granted from performers, but um, that's some, that is part of the work of what they've got to do. Um, and and that's, that's why in another setting we were talking about um, warm-up men and women uh for, for for sitcoms that that again is that's gelling gelling the audience together and revving them up ready for the show um where was i going before that long sprawling sentence well i, I, I just bit? i just don't know whether i just don't know whether that was a you know i couldn't make up my mind i was like a, like a cat with a mouse i kept thinking oh is it oh yeah it is oh no it isn't no no it's it's picked up no it's not oh no it's a bit, well it's a bit dry as a as a as a format, um, mm. it, you see, it was nice because, in a way, you know, a lot of these stand up things now end up being about um, identity of the of the of the person who's doing the stand up, and it's all about it's you know jokes. It, it made me think because this is from twenty fifteen, isn't it? This particular episode is it that far back? I thought yeah. it was a bit more recent. Yeah, oh, okay. Um, but it kind he mentions uh, Theresa May. I thought it was twenty eighteen, but maybe I've read misread. No, tw well, I, that was on BBC Sounds. It said it, this episode was or this series was twenty fifteen. Uh, oh, forgive me, I must be confusing. It was when Theresa May was Home Secretary, wasn't it? Which is oh, was it? Uh, yes. Yeah, which would make more sense for a, for yeah. a Bobby to refer to the yes. Home Sec. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, there's this kind of, it's like I say, it kind of felt it was, it was, um, there was a, there was a, a sort of inherent dryness to it that, um, I don't know, I, it, like I say, on, on the other hand is that it was, it was refreshing because they all seem to be about identity now that it was about something other than that. And so just, just good old fashioned bad behavior. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I was, never quite understand them, um, but we don't want to get drift off into identity wars. But okay, but but didn't you think it, wasn't it a clever way to engage the crowd, and of course the crowd beyond, which is us listening at home mm -hmm. or on the move, and um, and to to tease you into the mind of a copper. I thought, and uh, you know, he presented it. Who who knows if it's the truth and unvarnished and, you know, one did imagine, uh, I felt towards the end, I uh, don't want to give too much away, but there's a certain degree of repetition. We will hear about a certain character, won't we, uh, in the second audio clip. Yeah. Um, it just, the shape of it was slightly too neat, but hey, you could say, well, he worked in the force, as he said, for 20 years, he's going to have some stories which were neat, and he will pick the ones that work for that purpose. Can you not cut him a bit of slack that it's another way to present a show? Yeah. yeah it, I mean, he's telling you a story, but he's in, engaging you in the story. I think so. I mean, these are around the peripheries, I have to say, and, and there, were, there were parts of it where I thought, I mean, you know, really sharp and really clever, and there was one particular 
exchange where at the start he'd, he'd asked the audience to write down and give him a piece of paper that that was the you know what was the worst thing that you'd what was it what was the, the worst well, illegal the worst thing, thing you'd done while drunk while drunk that's what it was sorry yes the worst thing you'd done while drunk and he talked to this woman and then and then he said who's that with us his her 15 year old daughter and then a few moments later, he read out one that said, "I'm I'm only fifteen, and and, it, and it, so I'm he sitting next to my mum, and I can't tell you yeah, when I was drunk." Yeah, yeah, and and it was just, and I kind of thought, well, if that's if that's not genuine, then that's really good writing, isn't it? You know, and good. And if he was a thought of, if he thought that up on the spot, that's even better. I mean, that's just that's uh, brilliant if it was on the spot. And yeah. then, in a way, the problem it's a bit like when you watch football and and like somebody you know is is like eighteen yards out. And the ball comes across, and they just leather it. And like nine times out of ten, it will go into row Z. And that that one time out of ten, it will go into the top corner of the net. And everybody think they did it on purpose. You'll never know, will you, whether they did it on purpose or whether it was a failed cross. They're not, you know, it's it's no. it's that kind of thing. So you you never you never see the successes, do you? In that sense, you know, you you don't you don't know mm. how how successful they are. But yeah, I mean, these are just kind of stuff on the periphery. I mean, there was like he said, he said, and I'm sure this is this is kind of stemmed out and genuinely said at work that he said he worked on the tattoo to teeth ratio <laughs> yeah. when when assessing. Oh, that was good when a person. Yeah, I mean, that's just brilliant, isn't it? That it's just but real life, you know. It's, it's mm. yeah, and you can picture it, which is why it's funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. There was just part of me where I kind of thought, oh, this is, this is dragging a bit. And then I became, I became aware of time going slowly. And then that kind of ruined it for me. That happened both times I listened to it, which is, which is, I think probably even worse in a way. Shall we, talking of time, um, cut to the chase and go to the second of two audio clips yeah i mean because th- again let's hope let's hope that we find something in here that people will listen to this and go he's talking out of he's at it and what he's on about the fool the fool the man's a fool and that's a blithering idiot um mm. as of before i mean i'll just let alfie pick up the story although uh, just a bit of background is that he's been all the way through he's been talking about this kind of imaginary perpetrator well, no, he, he delivers it as as a real case history that he experienced when working for Humberside Police Force. Oh, I I kind of got the impression it was more of a more of a, um, a, a hypothetical, but okay, I'll stand corrected. On I that think one. that that's the way he asks us to receive it, whether we want to. Either way, uh, this perpetrator he's he's been kind of building up as he's been like, like doing low level things and he's saying right well what would you do with him now or right now he's done this what would you do with him now and now he's kind of done this um and uh, it's got to the stage where he's uh, he's well this this perpetrator's taking the pee or rather actually he's kind of giving it really in a way <laughs> back to the story we've had a quiet couple of hours we're still on foot patrol and suddenly once again the radio bursts into life tango bravo zero three tango bravo zero three can you attend Taylor's Pie Shop on the High Street? Report received from CCTV Control that there is a male acting suspiciously in the shop doorway at the front of the store. As I approach the shop, I see that the suspicious male is... You've guessed it. It's the one and only, it's Gobby Nobby. And he is urinating in the shop doorway, ironically, down the We Buy Any Gold sign. <laughs> This man really is a stain on the community. <laughs> so, audience question. We've now got Nobby urinating in a doorway. There's no specific offence of public urination, but there's usually a bylaw in place. And certainly we could, again, consider public order offences. So, the question is, who is now going to arrest him and who is going to go with the flow? <laughs> Well, I remember the things you remember, eh? The night before Charles and Di's wedding, they were talking about if you're caught short and you're on the Royal Mile or whatever, mm. but you haven't got access to Buckingham Palace, um, and you uh, relieve yourself on a public highway, or hopefully there's a d- d- just a degree of discretion, um, but it, before the copper can arrest you, if you say in pain, in pain, in pain, there's some ancient law by which saying in pain in three times gets you off the hook. Really? As it were. So they said. 
Mm. Now, that was before the days of Google, so now we can Google it. Yeah, well, I'll bring us straight on to that. Interestingly, mm. there was he, he had a script editor, didn't he? I, got, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Willing, who's just, just done tons of stuff. I mean, he's worked on Have I Got News For You. Um, is he, he a willing script editor? He's a willing script editor. <laughs> yes, he is, yeah. He, he wrote, um, I'll tell you what was his comedy programme. Do you remember Zapped? That we uh, that we slapped. I do. Years yeah, that's not about tasering, though, is it? You didn't enough? you didn't like that at all, did you? But um, um, no, it was an odd, oddball one. Was it trying to be simultaneously historical and futuristic, or sort of fan- fantasy? Yeah, he's kind of travelling in time, wasn't he? Really, but uh, Weird. You, you're, you're you're a big fan of reality, aren't you? With the established. Well, this. not 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 the real reality. Mm. <laughs> like. I like a presentation of a kind of reality that I can cope with. If if you had to put a number on it, a percentage on it, three, oh, three percent. You haven't finished the question. If you had to, if you had to, if you had to put a number on it, percentage wise, I thought we were talking about weighing in the street. I thought, do I have to number it? It's the only one I've got. As a as a, as a ratio, Horatio, Horatio. I knew him well. <laughs> on the one hand, you've got engaging, and on the other, comedic. What would you? Are what, you not allowed to be both at the same time? You've got to choose either. Or. For this particular exercise, it would help. <laughs> well, as you know, I don't like exercise. Um, <laughs> I know where you're leading, and I feel I'm being led the way he leads his audience. Um, I think. Well, I'm I'm going to be annoyingly in the middle, really, because. Um, and that's not a bad place in my view to be uh, because he has involved people in what, you know, I cut him enough slack to say, well, for the sake of argument, let's call it a proper case history and experience of his. Uh, but he also, he's got the ad libs. He's got uh, the lovely comedy callback at the end. The shape of it is beautifully done and um, good script editing, obviously, as well as I think good scripting. So, yeah, I, I think best of both worlds for me. How does it stack up then against something like, I mentioned um, uh, Dave Gorman, but the other thing that came to mind constantly, uh, and I think possibly because I've been listening to it just as a, a something to listen to, um, Simon Evans goes to market. Gosh, a yeah, very we that a long time ago. Very similar kind of kind of setup, though, wasn't it? Although obviously Simon Evans, he's, he's I don't think professes or claims to be any kind of financial expert. But is that was he was doing politics and sort of economics, market economics? Well, he was doing time, was he was doing money, around? wasn't he? Really, I suppose that's why he goes to market. He was talking about like you know land and and spirits and tobacco and all of those yeah. kind of things. So I remember enjoying that. Um, provided I haven't rewritten my memories, I think I I think you're confusing genre with the individual doing it. And that, you think that makes a difference? Well, you're sort of suggesting that there'll always be a Dave Gorman scenario and anything where I step out of that and enjoy it, there's something wrong with me or like, like the genre is more important to me than actually the individual artist doing it. Hmm. I, you know, I'm not having a go at Dave Gorman. I, I, I think he does what he does well. He's having I remember a go at my... Dave Gorman now. What's the matter with him? <laughs> listen, love, he's only having a go at Dave Gorman. Um <laughs> Diamond Gazer Gorman. Uh, yes, I mean, people can listen to the Dave Gorman edition. I don't need to repeat all my analysis. But, um, uh, yeah, I don't mind. Look, I just want a good show. Mm. And if a part of a good show is having a case history, that, it, you know, if you do, do it on paper, your pitch to Radio 4 might look very unfunny, but in the right hands, and I think Alfie Moore is the right hands, he's got the quips, he, he's got the comebacks, uh, timing, all those things. What's not to like? Okay. Uh, I, I just had a quick look back as well. Um, Simon Evans goes to market. We gave a 7 out of 10. But I'm not sure how the split was on that one, so no. you've got away with it another one. By the look no, of criminal it. records in those days were inadequately uh, capped, <laughs> weren't they, Shane? <laughs> Can I mention big shout outs at the end? Did you, did you, because you should, you as a good continuity man, <laughs> you should know this. Who did, oh who did the continuity voice at the end? I'm not sure I heard one, did I? Um, it's a fair cop, was. Produced was it by and Zeb Sones. I always get his surname wrong. Jim Lee. 
Oh, Jim Lee, who's a bit of a northerner. He's not, he's a Midlander. He's a, he's a Coventry. Well, that's a Coventry. north of Watford, isn't he? He sat in the chair I used to sit in. He did the breakfast show at Coventry. And the only reason I know Jim is he sent me a really lovely email when I'd, I'd been doing it about a year or something like that. Sure, he wasn't confusing Shane O'Connor's. And he, just, and he said, he said, oh, I just wanted to say how much I enjoy the show. And, oh. Yeah. And I went, Was he oh, drunk? Man, you're Jim Lee. It's like. You know, I'm not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, it's not- I say nice things about you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, but right. You don't Are we them. moving inexorably, um, which is a good word to throw in, to the marking thereof? I, I think so. I think it's uh, it's a fair cop, isn't it? Very good. Yeah. But is it a fair cop? I, I and I know for a fact. I believe for a fact. It's uh, your turn, darling. Okay. I'm, first. I'm not going to muck about. I'm going. Uh, I think he lost the audience in parts as well. Um, and there's a bit where he's talking about his handcuffs, handcuffs seizing up, and uh, there was there was barely a titter in the house. But I would say all, all things being mm. equal, I think I think for me, I was disappointed. I think it's fair to say. I think I'd expected it to be maybe more than it was but it was the second series the first episode of the second series i will um at some stage i can't commit to when but i will at some point go back and listen to more episodes just to see because very often you do that and uh but for me it's it's i think it's i'm wavering between a two and a two and a half i'm gonna give it two and a half i think you should i mean even two and a half is quite tight yeah yeah but hey it's you we're talking about uh and i am going to give it four oh so I make that six and a half. Have I got that right this week? Probably. I'd I'd uh, I'd have to get my fingers out. Or uh, or your abacus. I'll take my socks off. Yeah. Um, yeah. Six and a half out of ten for it's a fair cop. And as Adrian said, you can go onto BBC Sounds and it is still languishing in all its glory. <laughs> Hopefully not languishing. Uh, is an abacus someone swearing at a top Swedish pop group? Abacus. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Hey, Deconstruct it, hey, don't you? Hey, Bjorn, you effer. <laughs> oh, you effer. <laughs> what? Eric, you effer. Um, Google it. So, it's that time. Right. It's the time t- 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 where I set the homework for next week. Now, I've got a real morality problem. I don't mean genuine in life, although perhaps I have. Is it immoral? Because I've heard episode one of series one. Oh, my and God. I. Possibly there is only the one series. Is it immoral for me to set episode two just because it suits me? Because I want to hear what happens next. No, it's your choice, isn't it? It's your, honestly, yeah, you but do worry that, about the things I mean, that you shouldn't. But, well, yeah, but maybe I should worry about things I should. Um, can, I can't yeah, but set you never two worry shows. about whether you worry about the things that you shouldn't. That's the point, <laughs> isn't it? Well, that leaves me worrying, though. Mm. The point is, uh, I think more than perhaps your average series, episode one of series one sets things up, and I I don't know if it's going to make sense if people don't come in at the ground floor. I mean, it's beautifully set up, in my view. But you don't want to listen to episode one again or see episode one again. Yeah, that's terribly selfish, isn't it? Yeah. Having confessed to it, I hear myself. Well, it's got to be series one, episode one. I am. Well, I tell you what, because I've heard it once. I will creep on to episode two. You, in my you've own a, time. You've only got. You've, if you me. did episode one, you've only got to watch it mm. once, haven't you, to do your notes? Listen, because, because, it's radio. We're talking, listen, but yes, yes. You've only got to listen once because. You're right. You've, so my other listen will be of episode two. Yeah. You put my r- mind at rest. Yeah. Blow it. What the hell time. is it? Well, if I say to you, <sighs> it's Ronnie. Um, when the dog dies. Ronnie Ancona. Uh, <laughs> Got you there. Oh, I said to my producer, yeah, you see? it's Ronnie Ancona. <laughs> I, er, I said, it's a she. Okay. The lovely Ronnie Ancona. There's an absolutely um, DDG, drop-dead gorgeous um, photo of Ms. Ancona. Hmm. This it makes me realise uh, how long it is since I've last uh, seen her on the telly. It's actually, uh, or heard her on the radio, this radio show, uh, it's BBC Radio 4, it's also on BBC Sounds. It is called Mums on the Run. We are talking, yes, Series 1, Episode 1 then. Um, but it's 2010, can you believe that? So that's 12 years ago. Wow. As we live and wow. breathe. Um, is it sitcom, course, is it? Because I, I, I'm very uncomfortable with uh, impressionists. They always make me feel, <laughs> I, seriously, I do. I'm, I'm terrible. I always yeah, well, don't prejudge. 
Listen without prejudice, as dear oh. George Michael sang. <laughs> uh, and that's it. Thanks for your company. I'm off to uh, to uh, go to our YouTube channel <laughs> and uh, write, at 45 minutes, they buggered off. <laughs> I'm off. <laughs> 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 and uh, I'm going to put on the handcuffs, but, uh, you know, that's between me and my bedroom and uh, the bedpost. So um, I think we'll leave it there. Otherwise, I will end up in the clink. <laughs>